What's going on everyone, a Shrewsbury here, and today I thought I'd go through 10 tips for the workshop editor in Overwatch that are sure to save you a bunch of time when creating your own game modes, heroes, and scripts. But first, I wanted to give a quick shout out. Don't forget to leave a subscribe and a like on this video if you want to get notified about different videos about the workshop mode in Overwatch in the future. Also, I have a Discord, which I'll leave in the description, that's a great place to go to test your code with other people and find bugs you might not be able to see by yourself. So make sure to check that out, but now let's get into the 10 tips. When creating HUD text, sometimes order is important. Use the sort order parameter to differentiate which HUD texts appear on top of what. Keep in mind that the already included Overwatch HUDs will be at indexed at zero, so if you use a negative number, it'll appear below, say, the clock countdown, and if you used a positive number, it would appear above. If you want to create a rule that continually checks and makes changes, add a isGameInProgress parameter set equal to true. Scripts only run when a condition is met, so if you have no conditions, then it will run once at the beginning of the game and wait for the condition to be true again, so adding this will allow it to continually check for that condition. When it comes to variables, it's important to remember that nearly anything can be stored in a variable, and you can change what type of thing is being stored in the variables at any time. Anything that has some sort of value or some sort of tracker can be stored. This could be effects, players, damage, modifiers, anything in the game can be stored in a variable. This can be used to delete specific effects. So if you wanted to create an effect and delete it a lot later, you can store that effect into a variable and then delete what is in that variable at any time. When it comes to arrays, things are similar. You can store anything in the game into any slot of an array. This includes mixing and matching different types. You could have a regular number stored in the first position, and a hero stored in the second position, and a position on the map stored in the third, and so on. This is a good way to get around not having enough variables, because we only have the alphabet's worth of variables. So if you wanted to say store all your player positions in variable A in an array, you could do that, or you could say take variable H and store all the variables for a given hero inside H at different indexes. There are two types of variables in the Overwatch Workshop Editor. There are global variables and player variables. Global variables are accessible to everyone and they share a common value. So if one player sets a global variable to one value and another player reads that for one of their scripts, they will get the value that the original player put into it. Player variables are only accessible to the player that it's attached to. So setting a player variable to the event player will only be accessible by the event player or someone else accessing this player's specific variables. Each player has their own set of player variables that is distinct from all other players in the game. If you have to create a loop, meaning something that will continue on indefinitely, you can add a loop command, but you must first add a wait command. This defaults to a fourth of a second, however, there has been a change that allows you to loop things faster at a minimum wait time of 0.016 seconds. This is much faster than the fourth of a second and creates for, for more fluid loops. If you need a very specific position on the map, you can hit this camera icon when you are in the position parameter. This will take the value that your character is at currently inside the game. When it comes to enabling and disabling different abilities in the game, there are two different functions. One is called enable. This will enable or disable the basic ability from that hero in the normal game of Overwatch. This has nothing to do, however, with hitting the control for that button. Hitting that control will still send a command saying that that control was hit. If you wanted to prevent a character from triggering a ability's button, you would use the disallow button. This prevents any sort of command being fired from that button. 
Strings can be complicated, but here's a quick tip to get you started. To say a normal message, find a message close to what you want to say in the dropdown for the string area and just click it and that's all you have to do. If you wanted to combine, say, a variable's value with another string, make sure that in the string parameter you include some sort of zero inside of brackets or one or two. What this does is it will create a string that will look like this, but in place of the zeros and the ones, it will do whatever is in these other parameters saying zero and one. So if we hit this and typed in string, hello, and for number one, we typed in string and did something else, dot, 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 we will get a string as a result that says hello slash dot, dot, dot. It is also important to point out that you do not need to loop creating HUD text. It will automatically update whenever the variable changes if you set reevaluation to visible to and string. This refers to who can see the string and this refers to the string itself. So if you leave this alone, there's no need to put this in a loop to keep updating its values. Thanks so much you guys for watching. Please let me know if there are any comments that I missed. I'm sure there are plenty of tips for the Overwatch Workshop editor, but if you have one that you found to be really good, please leave in the comment section below. And I hope to see you again sometime soon, hopefully on the Discord or in a future video comment. But until next time, thanks and have a good day.